Thank you for tuning in to the Biz Nation podcast. My name is Kerry Zarb, and I've been helping business owners just like you go from headache to heaven in a heartbeat for over 20 years. I'll be giving you all the top advice for getting started in your business, but I'll also be speaking with some of the best business minds to inspire you with valuable insights to help you get ahead in your business. If you've ever hit a roadblock or lost your passion, then this is the podcast for you. Welcome back to the Biz Nation podcast. If this is your first time listening, a massive welcome to you. I'm your host, Kerry Zarb, and in this podcast, we chat to business owners and share wonderful things to help you on your business journey. Today's guest is Melissa Stetcher from Hopeful Simplicity, and Melissa's going to chat to us about all things regarding organisation in your business, and we may even touch on organising with teams. Welcome to the show, Melissa. Hi, Carrie. Great to have you here. Welcome aboard. I hope you're ready. We're going to deep dive into your brain and pull out some amazing stuff. (laughs) That sounds great. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. I appreciate your time so much. This is going to be cool. We're just going to have a general chat and see what amazing things we can pull out for today's listeners. So that's going to be great. So Melissa, I wanted to start with who you are, if you could introduce yourself to the listeners and what you currently do. So I am Melissa Stetcher. I am the owner and creator of Hopeful Simplicity, which is a less stressed lifestyle that really focuses on organizing. So we help people, teams, families, homes, things like that, shift that overwhelm from it's all on one person to really compromise and shift that toward the entire team. So then we're all working together and we're all less stressed and just being more productive and intentional. Awesome. And I guess we'll go into the backstory later, but how do you work with people now? What are you looking to achieve? You know, what's kind of the process that you go through with, you know, someone that needs help? Because a lot of us are disorganized. So many of us are now working from home. Everything's changed. The world has been flipped upside down, turned around, and here we are. So I know myself as a a small business owner and working from home in a home office, it can be challenging, right? Like it can be a massive challenge. There sometimes is just crap everywhere. So that's why we have people like you, Melissa, in the world to help us. What what What's some of the things that you wanted to share with us? Where do we start and how do we get to this wonderful place of being organized? <laughs> so I always encourage people to compromise. I work with a lot of families and we as women, as parents, it's things like that. We feel like it's our job to just handle it all, right? It's, it's my job. I'll yeah. just do it. I'll put that away. Everybody leaves things out. But in the long run, we're setting the rest of our family up for failure in a sense. If, if I'm coming behind my son and picking up everything, then what's he going to do when he moves out? Call me? No. Right. And the same thing, like if you're a leader of a company and you're just handling it all, then why do you have a team? So we really focus on distributing things so the entire team is involved in organizing. So if one person handles the paperwork of the house, somebody else would handle like the kitchen schedules and things like that. But you, it's really about communicating. Uh, my son and I meal plan together hey, what do you want to cook this week? And so it's really that shift of it's not really all on me, right? It's not really all on one person. It's really on all of us, whether it's in the Mm -hmm. office building or at home. And that's really what we focus on. And sometimes that's hard conversations because I am a control freak. I'll admit it. My way is the right way. But my way isn't the right way for someone else. So finding that give and take and finding that compromise is really where we start. We normally start in common areas, kitchens, living rooms, you know, a drop zone when you come in the door. Those are the common areas in most homes, even most offices. You have like, you know, the coffee. Everybody meets around the coffee station or the water cubicle, things like that. You have that common shared space. And that's where we normally want to start. And that's where we want to focus. And we want to know 
how everyone's going to use it so we can find the right style for everybody to maintain it. Because what you would do is probably something that I would do. You and I would probably organize the same way, but not everybody on the team would. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's normally where we go. <laughs> yeah. So what about things like, um, and I'm, I'm sure you would dive into things, little things like systems and processes and, and ways to control the paperwork versus the digital stuff, because I think that's one of our biggest challenges too as we hop through each of these years and particularly with COVID and remote working. So there's probably more digital, you know, documents floating around, emails. I don't know about anybody else, but emails can just get ugh, overwhelming like crazy. So yeah. How do you, how do we, how do we, how do we manage, like manage that space of, you know, digital versus paper? Do we stop pressing print? Do we go all digital? Because I'm, I'm still struggling with that myself. What's, what's your tips on <laughs> digital versus paper? Uh, my tips are I'm old school and I, I like to touch it. I like to feel it, right? I, I, I'm in that, I'm in that mindset. If I can't hold it, I don't own it. And Love so... It shifting that to say a 12 year old's mindset of no, I'll just go. Psh, 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 psh. Oh, okay. I don't know how to do that. Sometimes you have to call for help. Right. But there's, there is a hard time. Like when you're working at home and you have the kids schooling at home and you're trying to, you know, run your home, you have to block yourself. And I mean, you have to, this is my workspace and these are my hours I'm working. Once these hours are up, I will no longer be in this space, be it physically or mentally. I really think the two cross over to some point, mm. but you yep. have to set those boundaries for yourself to regardless of if I have to put all my papers in a box and put that box in the closet, or if I have to close all the windows on my screens, that that is the biggest struggle with the last you know year and a half, two years of this pandemic and realizing what we didn't know, we didn't know. And so designating homes for homes, everything has a home, right? This is my workspace. This is my home space. I mean, I have containers behind me. This is my office. This is where I come to work. I don't come here to play games. I don't come here to relax. I don't come here to have meals. Those have a different home. Yeah, I'm looking at you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but that's the, that's the thing we get we get co so consumed, especially as entrepreneurs, we get so consumed in being productive, being make that money, make that time, make it go, 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 that we forget our human sides. And if our human sides aren't taken care of, if we don't have a home and system in place for our human side, then we're really doing our entrepreneur side a disservice. Mm -hmm. So setting up those systems and those self boundaries, space, the systems of how you're actually going to be productive, but also giving that system and that window a hard stop. That's that. I mean, that's key. That is definitely key during a pandemic, but I think it's key for a generalization of wellness. Mm. And something you said a minute ago really resonated with me. You mentioned about if you've got the computer screens open, you know, shutting down those items. Like you might still want to do something for yourself on the computer, but, you know, closing, you know, that, that browser or that document that you're working on all day. And I accidentally did something. I think you'll be proud. And I didn't even mean to do it. It just kind of happened because, you know, we all or many of us use Google Chrome, but I just started using I, know, I always get it wrong. I always call it Oprah and I think it's called Opera, the browser that's called Opera. Yeah, like the, like the Opera. <laughs> and um, <laughs> what I actually did, uh, Opera allows you to have multiple kind of, I don't even know what it's called. It's like favourites on the sidebar. So I've actually got one for my stuff, one for this client, one for this client, one for that client. And then you can, like when you click on that little button on the on that side, it then opens all of their tabs. So you can put these little icons. And what I've actually started to do because I predominantly was using it for client work was I'd have all the client tabs lined up. And when the day's finished, I would close Opera like completely close that browser and then my personal staff or whatever else I wanted to continue working with would be on Chrome. So I, and then at one point when I was still transitioning, I had Firefox for another client and it was just a, a, a different way of trying to organize work, life, you know, 
fun, creative, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So I thought you'd be proud of that, that I I, I think have. that's great. I love it's, that. And you're very, so you and I are very similar in our, in our processes, in our t- teaching and coaching, we, we discuss the different kinds of organizing. One is very macro and one is very micro. Mm-hmm. And so you're a very micro organizer. I've known that since we've been able to share space, but what you do is probably not what somebody else can do. Somebody else is just like clients dump all that in just one folder. And then I'll search through it later where you're very much like me at my, at my, um, my nine to five job. uh, I have, this is this company and then all the associated names. And then this, and this, these are like files in my thing and then Mm -hmm. all the associated names with it. So that's a very, I mean, that's pretty great because that's, that's kind of what we teach is because, Somebody, a macro organizer cannot come in and understand your system. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I probably could, but I'm a fellow micro organizer. And I think that's a very something like that's a huge thing that people don't realize. They think that organizing, here's your style. Good luck. Mm -hmm. And so then more and more people are like, I'm using the file cabinet, but why are all my papers always on top? Oh, because my file cabinets are too detailed for you. Just get a bed. Just get one simple drop zone. And, but over time you're like, you're marketed to, these are all the things you need to be organized. These are the things you need to run your business. That's great. But if that's not your organizing style, it's not only not going to work, but you're defeating yourself. And the last thing an entrepreneur needs is more negative thoughts in their own head. That's the last thing we need is to question something else. Absolutely. Yes. And I think I also confess that when the pandemic hit and I went from working in client offices to working remote and I was already transitioning to this kind of space, I was quite fortunate it wasn't a sudden shock, Um, but it was weird timing that 2020 was going to be the beginning of me working remote for clients rather than on site. So I had a couple of months before the pandemic hit to get used to that kind of system and and that process, which was good. But then suddenly, like you used to, like in a client office, you know, you print off a remittance advice. So a payment's, you know, paid them uh, for services. And then you start ticking it off and highlighting and circling and, you know, doing all the pen work and making things bright and colourful. And then suddenly I was home and I and I was doing the same thing. I was hitting print and I'd bring it over to the desk and I'd highlight and I'd circle. And then probably a couple of months later, I was like, why am I printing? I've got this whole box of stuff now that needs to be shredded. And I was like, no, nah, I've got multiple screens. I'm quite fortunate to have the space and, and the ability to have multiple screens. I can stick it on this screen. I've actually turned one, you know, normal monitors like sit this way. Well, I've actually got one that sits that way. So, and that's my email monitor. But then if I get a remittance advice and it's quite long with detailed invoices, I can stick it on the, I guess it's called the portrait monitor and just go through it, you know, piece by piece and have the other screen right next to it. So I quickly turned digital. I used to be very heavy on the tree killing capacity and um, definitely flipped over to the digital space. And I, I thank the pandemic for that. You know, I may not have fully made that switch had we not all been, you know, sent to our room and been forced into this new way of working. So, yeah. yeah when and then you have like, to sit in your own clutter, it's like, oh, do I really need to create my own clutter? Maybe not. And then, yeah, you, you realize, okay, I don't really need to keep all this. I can just get it a different way. I'm very exactly. proud of you. Yes, I think I'm doing okay. I'm getting there. It's not all perfect. You should see the post-it note pile. That's another story. We'll, <laughs> we may not go into that because that's a little bit messy. But I think, yeah, definitely I've always had some kind of digital filing system, you know, client uh, client files are in one folder and then subfolders of each client like that and then they'll have another layer of subfolders of all the different pieces depending on the client so I've always been very organized like that I hate not being able to find anything but I think the trick now is the that little nasty download button and it goes into the download folder and then grabbing it out of there and putting it where it belongs that can be a, a trap for sure mm-hmm. Yeah, I always keep the two windows up. So I have the, the whatever I'm downloading. If I'm downloading my Monday files, I have my fun, my Monday thing open and then I can just drag it over because it's uh-huh. like Insta sort and I'm done. I don't have to find out where my downloads went again. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
You're listening to the Biz Nation podcast. I would love to connect with you outside of the podcast and you can find me on Clubhouse, Instagram, Facebook or LinkedIn by searching my name, Kerry Zarb, or directly on my website at kerryzarb.club. And don't forget, if you need more support in your business, you can find the community on Facebook at Biz Nation Support Group. And I want to go back to something else that you touched on, Melissa, and it was talking about, you know, how we perceive something that we've organised versus someone else. So this this turns into a bit more of the team working capacity for those that have teams and other people that they're working with. And I think you're right because, you know, as you know, spreadsheets are my thing. So having multiple spreadsheets with multiple tabs and multiple colours and systems and processes, <laughs> it gets a little bit crazy. And I think I think I always think of, you know, high tech, how can I really expand this out to do the work for me? But then, you know, if I pass that over to a team member, which I do because I do have a small team, particularly on the podcast side, getting them to understand what that all means can be a little bit of a challenge. So what's your tips to those out there listening? You know, how can we, do we, do we need to hone it back? Do we need to make it less complex? What's, what's your advice? It hurts me every time I share, but it's, it is the truth and the lessons I have learned. You have to organize for the simplest person. So, and I mean, and we have a conversation when I organized our office, I talked to the person, I was like, I need to see your desk drawer to understand how you organize. And she's like, what are you doing? And so I realized she needs a macro system, right? I just need all my pens get dumped in here, done. Where I'm like, there should be a container for the red ones and a container for the blue ones and a container for the (laughs) highlighters and then the pink. Well, yeah, but talking to that person And I mean, you can even call me and show me their desk drawer and I can probably tell you how they can organize, but figuring out the simplest way to compromise that as much as it pains me (laughs) is, is what's going to set your team up for success. Because if they have to dig through your stuff and they don't speak your language, you're both going to be frustrated and you're both going to be losing time. And honestly, we don't have time to lose. That's productivity that we could have been already doing, mm-hmm. right? And productivity gets me money. I like money, right? We want to make that money. So if I set it up for you to succeed because you're the manager of it, go team. Yeah. But if I set it up for me, for me to succeed and be like, here, you look good luck, that's, that's setting you up for stress. We don't mm-hmm. do that. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right and something that I've kind of taken on board from – not only what you've just said, but also little things that I've kind of learned since I've been working with this team at home is keep the really deep dive stuff on another tab. And just when I then introduce, like, you know, me and my spreadsheets, but when I introduce the spreadsheet to the team, just keep the simple version at the front and go, go to this tab. Don't worry about those tabs. Just go to this tab and keep it mm-hmm. nice and clean. And, you know, like you say, you've got to work with them and how their minds operate and just keep that in the in the forefront at all times. And, yeah, I think that's, that's what I've kind of learned, you know, keep the mess behind. It has to be attached. It needs to be part of it. Some of it's interlinked and kind of, you know, formulated to grab the data from somewhere else. But keep, keep the complex stuff away from the team so that it just doesn't, you know, blow their mind really. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was talking with a client uh, last week, I think, or maybe the week before, and she's got kids, and it was very frustrating. I was like, look, you keep your crazy in your sock drawer, not in his, not in theirs. You keep it in yours, because Mm -hmm. that brings me peace. I can be as detailed and micro-organized as I want in my space, not in our space. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Just Love keep it. it in your crazy drawer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. Now, Melissa, you touch on many things in organization. I just want to expand on this for a moment. So not only business organization, office organization, but you even hit the whole home organization, which I love, particularly now in this space of, you know, remote working and life, life in general, you know, we used to talk about work-life balance. They've kind of become very morphed over the pandemic. You hit on it before as well about what time do we finish work if we're working from home. Shocker, 
self-confession, absolute shocker. I will be at my desk, you know, 15 hours a day if I can. And the food and the Netflix and everything comes to that desk. So I'm working on it. I'm not perfect yet. I'll get there. <laughs> um, but But definitely, you know, thinking about how they work together because like you were saying about organizing you know someone's drawer or something might need just a little bit more structure to it but life you know you mentioned the sock drawer like life organize organization now for those that are working at home it's important to have if you want to be organized if you really want to free up your mind and feel you know, at ease, bliss, all that kind of stuff. So I love that. Um, just speak to us for a moment about the home organisation because I've seen some of your clips. They're pretty impressive. <laughs> What's going on? Um, so I I have a home and I was stressed out all the time. And I didn't want that, right? And I didn't want my family to see that, oh, this is normal. You're going to come home and you're just going to be stressed out and want to choke everybody and right I didn't want to wear the hats of the maid and the chef and the you know picker upper of all the things and so it was very important to me to live by example uh -huh. and so then I realized I wasn't the only one yep and then the pandemic hits and you know we're like we got school set up on that end of the table office set up on this end of the table and by the end of the day we're just going to kill each other yeah yeah and so I think I think the last year in helping people really hone in on setting your own boundaries, give yourself permission to stop, I think yeah. has really been really been key, mm -hmm. especially for home life, especially mm. for people that watch Netflix in their office. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. I try not to, but. It just happens. I can't help it. I, I really try not to, but yeah, it's, I think someone, someone recently said in one of our group conversations, someone recently said, oh, you know, we need to ban eating in the office. Someone I think had come into, um, we know each other from Clubhouse and we interact a lot on that platform. And someone had come in and said that, you know, they just naturally, you know, have their, like they'll make a meal and then they'll take it back to their office. I am a true believer that if I did not do that, I would not eat. So I need to be, you know, I need to have nutrition in my life and that involves having food. So the food just naturally gets, sometimes it's even stored behind me in little baskets secretly, you know, the snacks and the and the fun stuff is I have to walk around my desk to get it, but it's there and it's, and it's on the ready. Otherwise I wouldn't eat. I'd just forget. Like sometimes it gets to two o'clock in the afternoon and I've completely forgotten to, all I've done is coffee, you know, because you just forget, mm. you get busy and you get engrossed in what you're doing and it's just too easy to, to put it off so that's something I need to work on for sure for sure yeah I'm the same way I keep veggie straws at my desk during my nine to five job because I'm like if I could just eat then I could get down a little early then I can get the heck out of this space exactly. so but I do I do have a a a self reminder of I try to drink 120 ounces of water during the work day because uh -huh. that forces me to get up and move <laughs> true true so and that's why and I, I go I'm, for the coffee. Yeah. And see, and I, I limit myself to, I can't have, like, in the mornings, I can't have my cup of coffee until I've finished my glass of water. Oh. I can't have, you know, my V8 until I finish this bottle of water. Mm. And so then it's like a reward system, but I get that V8, right? Like, as yeah, long yeah. as I can get to that goal, it's fine. But yeah. You gotta, you gotta talk to your own self. Figure out your systems that work, and sometimes that's bribery of coffee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for me, if I have half a bottle of water, I can have coffee. Then I've got to have another half a bottle of water, and I can have a coffee. Pain reward, pain reward, and and it's not painful. The water's not painful. It's more the conditioning, you know, of ourselves and and making those little rules for ourselves for us to follow. You know, <laughs> same like organizing the home and the office. You know, pick up the stuff, use it, put it away. It's just that's how it's got to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Melissa, I want to ask you, how did you get to this point? You know, like you've got, you know, all these amazing things happening and I know the that the business is in, in a growth stage at the moment. What's the backstory? Where, where Did this just come from pure frustration that you wanted to kill everybody that you thought to launch this space? Yeah. Yeah, I was asked what's for dinner. 
And if I had, and at that time, there were four of us living in the house, two adults and two kids. And it was always, hey, what's for dinner? And I got to the point of, I, I don't care. Starve. I don't, I don't care. I'm not cooking. I'm not planning. I'm not wondering if we have food. And so then it's like, like I was saying before, I didn't, I didn't want that. Right. That, that didn't fulfill me. I didn't want to be that yeah. role model. I didn't want to be that person. I, I'm a hyper active, happy, energetic person. that's kind of like snarky and hopeful and in your face, but I was just defeated. <laughs> and so that's how yeah. it started. And so we started one small space, one small thing. I, st- I made my bed every morning because now I'm starting each yep. day with a win. Right. Mm-hmm. I started doing the dishes after I got the bed habit down. I started to do the dishes. So then I woke up to a clean sink every day. Whoa, like nice. two wins. Right. So I talked to my son. Why can't we put like what what do we need to do to have you put your clothes in your space? And he's like, I'm never going to use a drawer. Mm-hmm. Cool. We got rid of the dressers. No more drawers. No more hangers. He has been doing his own laundry since he's eight. Yep. We have a no fold system. Oh. Nothing gets hung. Nothing gets folded. All he does is he does his wash. It goes to the dryer. It goes in his basket. He throws it in his bins. Done. Done. That was a major control thing for me because that's yeah. not that's not how I do it, right? You, you, you match your socks and you fold them in thirds so they fit, right? And you yeah. hang all your shirts the same direction and the same color hangers. But I had to let that go for him to succeed. Mm -hmm. So we had those conversations of like, I need to be done with this. I have to give up some control. What do we need to do to make it work for you? Yeah. And it was as easy as just get rid of drawers and stop caring if his socks matched. Looking back, I'm like, oh, I should have led with that. Right. Like I should have (laughs) started with that years ago, (laughs) but now I don't have to touch preteen socks. Score. Wow. Wow. So it's, it's one little thing at a time, right? Yep. Make your bed, do the dishes, switch a system and get it out of your control. Mm-hmm. Right now he cooks these nights a week. Now we do this together. Now we manage everything together. And it's literally one small thing at a time. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just picturing my wardrobe and all my hangers and thinking, right, they're going in the bin. <laughs> just because even as adults, we've got better things to do with our time, you know, like when we're busy and life is busy. And I think of it, you know, kind of a switch fashion, you know, like if I can spend a little bit more time with the family and a little bit less time in the business because I'm going to eliminate some of those chores that I don't like to do. I don't blame the kids for not wanting to put their clothes away because I hate it too, you know, like. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. As soon as this podcast is done, that's that's the first step for Kara. <laughs> it, that's all going in the bin. I, I'm going to get those bins that you spoke about. I want the bins. I want a sock bin, an underwear bin. That's it. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah oh. he's got, I think it's eight, eight 15 by 15 bins, just bins. There's no lids. There's uh-huh. big labels. Socks in one, pajamas in one. One is even for Goodwill. So when he puts that shirt on, but he had a growth spurt we didn't notice about it, it auto comes off. It doesn't go on the floor or in the yeah. hamper. Yeah. It goes straight to the donate bin. Oh, wow. So like there is a there is a maintaining concept built into his system for success. Wow. Oh, my God. You've just changed my <laughs> life. I'm not even joking. You really have. Never done. I know. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for coming. (laughs) Stay helpful. (laughs) Oh, that's amazing. We've got a couple more things to get through before we wrap it up, though. So I I just I don't want to lose it and and, and press. No, no, no. Stay tuned. Yep, that's it. (laughs) Melissa, I have this magical tin. Mm. And inside this tin is random questions. So I'm going to choose five random questions to ask you so that we can get to know you a little bit better number one number two three four and five i like that it's five i prefer odd numbers so i'm already happy with this well i'm actually shocked at myself because i'm a very even girl like i consider myself you know i like everything in symmetry and you know i do the two four six eight kind of thing so i don't know why five hmm 
but it's staying. I'm not going to change it. I think because it's halfway between 10, so that kind of resonates in my brain that we're 10 would be too many, you know, six might, yeah, anyway, five it is. <laughs> are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ooh, are you an introvert or an extrovert? I am an extroverted invert. Oh, so my choice is I will stay on my couch all the time. And I have a comfy, like I have a built in snuggler on my couch and it's like the fuzzy oh. material and I will yeah. binge watch and it's, and I fit, right? Like I can sit like straight out and not hang off. Like I fit perfectly and mm -hmm. I am introverted and people know, don't, don't even try on a Sunday. <laughs> don't even, she's not, she's not going to wear you know, the proper clothes or get the doors. So don't even bother. But <laughs> I can be extroverted. I can, if, if I feel, if my introvert feels safe in this space, then I can make friends with everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. I can love this space. I can sell yeah. the space. I'd be like, these are my new friends. Yay people. But I need a whole day to decompress. So when I yeah. do like classes yeah. or markets or shows or any, any, like when I set boots up, things like that, I have to take that next day off to let my introvert melt. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> Recovery. Recovery yeah. from being the extrovert. I get it. I get it. It makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> All right. Moving into the next question. <clears throat> If you could choose another era to live in, when would it be and why? Tough question. I haven't even decided my answer on this question, by the way. I don't, I don't know yet. And I say mm, I don't know yet okay. because, man, I could rock the 1920s clothes and those shoes. Oh my gosh, Mary Jane's all the time. Like it's my job, but I don't agree with the way things were. I am very equality. You know, we're humans. Let's just be humans and love each other. Right. Let's pour into each other. And I don't, I don't see that yet. I haven't seen that in a reflection yet. So I want mm. the 1920s outfits in a future time of humanity. Gosh, I'm not answering yeah. any of your questions properly, Love that. but that's okay. That's me. <laughs> that, no, that's it. That's it. That's all. That's what it's all about. All right. Next one. Who did you most admire as a child? Did you have someone that you looked up to? Maybe my a grandmother parent or a school teacher? Oh, Definitely my grandmother. Yeah. Oh. I get all the sass from her. All that. <laughs> nope. This is my way. We will all go my way. I get all of that energy and sass and female empowerment from from her. Definitely. And I see that in my mom, too. Like, it's definitely my mom's side. And whew, we are forces to be reckoned with. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. All right. Next question. Would you prefer a walk in the park or a walk on the beach? Beach. 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 100%. 100%. When was the last time you walked on the beach? Oh, we were actually there at the beginning of June. Yeah. Oh, so, so about a month, a month ago. ago. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yep. <laughs> you don't live near the beach? No, we are. I am landlocked. I'm about 12 hours from the beach. 12 hours? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, let me rephrase that. I'm about 12 hours far. from the ocean beach. I'm not a lake beach kind of yeah. girl. I'm an ocean beach kind of girl. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Awesome. All right. Last question and you're out of the hot seat. Yeah. Uh, ooh, do you prefer to be the driver or to be driven? Um. Probably to be driven. To be driven? Yeah. I would say to be driven. Good. And, and follow-up question to that, are you a good passenger? 
I try to be. And sometimes I think I am because I know it's like, no, I'm just going to play on my phone. So uh-huh. I'm not even paying attention. I'm not going to, I, I'm very conscious of not side seat driving or side braking. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what would your significant other say? Oh, they, they prefer driving. We, we, we went to, mm. we went to the beach last fall too. His friends lived down there and um, I drove because it was like 10 hours. I'm like, dude, you need a break. How would I pop in? It was not 20 yeah. seconds in the car. And he's like, you got it. And then he's like, uh-uh. No, you're not going to say see drive <laughs> or we're going to pull over on the shoulder and you're going to take back over. So I am very, I'm a good driver. I don't get in wrecks. I, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to hurt me. I don't want to yep. pay for that. So I'm a yeah. very good driver. I'm a very conscious no, driver, but it. I will not take that sass. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Leave me to drive. I'm in the zone. I know what I'm doing. Yes. Just back off. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Well, Melissa, this has been great. Thank you so much. Uh, where can we find you? Where Where will people be able to reach out to you? I am on all the things under Hopeful Simplicity. All of that can be found on our website. It's hopefulsimplicity.com. Awesome. Fantastic. I'm going to pop those links into the show notes for the listeners. And thank you once again for coming onto the show and sharing. Oh, we talked about all kinds of things. We went from the the office and the homeworking and the team and into the kids' wardrobe. And Kerry's going to go and fix her wardrobe any moment now. So I'm excited. (laughs) Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And it's been great to catch up. Thank you. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you for tuning in to the Biz Nation podcast. It was lovely to share this episode with you. Remember to subscribe to catch all future episodes and I would also very much love it if you'd leave me a rating or a review. Until next time, remember that you can also go from headache to heaven in a heartbeat.